History was made last night with trailblazing victories and historic firsts. In Florida, 25-year-old Democrat Maxwell Frost is the first Gen Z candidate elected to Congress. Massachusetts elected Democrat Maura Healey, the nation's first openly lesbian governor. She's also the state's first female governor, a flip for Democrats. In Vermont, Becca, Bl Becca Ballant becomes the first woman ever to represent the state in Congress, if you can believe that. Democrat Summer Lee, who we just spoke with, becomes the first black woman elected to Congress from Pennsylvania. And in Maryland, it's governor-elect Westmore. Democrats' other big flip last night, he's become just the third black elected governor in U.S. history and the fourth overall and the first black governor of Maryland. What an amazing night and what an improbable journey. But you believed. You believed that in this moment, our state could be bolder. And it's not lost on me that I've made a little history tonight myself as well. And Maryland's governor-elect Wes Moore joins me now. Uh, governor-elect Moore, it is good to see you. Uh, and I, I well, it congratulations. Let you. me just start by saying congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. It is great to be with you. It really is. I don't know if you're going to get to keep doing them dancing videos on your Instagram because you've been having a lot of fun on your Instagram. You might have to sober it up and like do like serious things now on Instagram. Like Bless you're now you. a governor. Um, I'm, 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 I'm not I'm not stopping. I'm oh, not okay. stopping. You're going to keep it stopping. going. Let me let me put up for you because it is kind of wild. Like we think about American history. This country has been you know around for quite a while, like 246 years of history. There have only been this many black governors. We go back to Oscar Dunn and PBS Pinchback during Reconstruction. You've got David Patterson, who served in New York, but he wasn't elected. He actually just served in New York. And then in the modern era, there's just Doug Wilder in Virginia and Deval Patrick in Massachusetts. It's a very, you can literally count them on one hand. What does it mean to you to be the third black elected governor of, in the United States ever? You know, it, it means a lot also just in terms of uh, in terms of my family's history. You know, I, my, my, my grandfather was the first one on, on my mom's side of the family born in the United States. And when he was just a toddler, it was the Ku Klux Klan that ran them out, where my great grandfather picked up the family in the middle of the night and moved them. And much of my family always pledged to never come back to this country. And much of them did not. But my grandfather did. And he came back, he attended an HBCU, and he became the first black minister in the history of the Dutch Reformed Church. And I think about him a lot, actually, in this moment, because, you know, I would ask him about what it was like being the first. And he always would tell me uh, he was proud of it, but that wasn't the assignment. That he said, you know, my job was to, was to, was to follow the will of God and follow the word of the Lord. And I think about, in this moment, I am very proud to be the, the first black governor in the history of, of the state of Maryland. But I come in and I say, but that's not the assignment. Uh, the assignment is that we actually have a unique chance to not just make history, we have a new cha unique chance to make child poverty history, a unique chance to make the racial wealth gap history, to make environmental injustice history. And then if I can do those things, then I think it truly, it underscores the fact that I understood the assignment. And, you know, Maryland also legalized uh, marijuana it is one of the things that you are thinking about doing. You know, there are a lot of people who are in jail for doing what a lot of folks in Colorado and other states are getting rich doing. People who are not, do not look like us are getting That's real right. rich selling marijuana now. Uh, would you consider wiping out those sentences of people who uh, were convicted of state marijuana crimes in Maryland? 100%. Uh, we are, we are going to focus on making sure that there is automatic record expungement because, you know, there, there's, there's two things that we have to think about when it comes to uh, the fact that the state of Maryland has now moved to, to legalize cannabis. You know, the first is we have to make sure that there's an equitable rollout for what this is going to look like, that we have to ensure that, uh, that this is used as an opportunity to not increase a racial wealth gap, but actually decrease and close a racial wealth gap. But you're absolutely right, Joy. I mean, the other thing that we have to remember, too, is you cannot talk about the benefits of legalization if you do not address the consequences of criminalization. 
and the fact that we have people who continue to walk around with asterisks next to their name for things that is now going to be a multi-billion dollar industry. So we have to be serious and sincere about using our office to be able to address things like automatic record expungement for individuals and also and, and also being able to, to rid our prisons and think about how we're using this as a moment to think differently about, uh, about parole and probation for people who are still have uh, still have cannabis convictions on their record. Yeah. And um, you defeated um, a election denier, uh, a Mr. Cox, who was so extreme that the sitting, the current Republican governor wouldn't even endorse him. Um, did he call you to concede? He did actually a few hours ago. He uh, he called uh, and he conceded. And it was it was a it was a brief, but uh, but actually a, a very kind call. Uh, and uh, and where he you know just he thanked me for the race. He congratulated me on the on the victory. Uh, and we actually talked about his son, who was a who was a member of the 82nd Airborne Division, which is actually my former unit in the Army. Uh, but I'm excited for the fact that now we are we are moving forward. Yeah. And we're moving forward with an intensity that I think this moment deserves. Well, and, and I'm sure you're going to have great conversations with uh, my friend, Michael Steele, who is the first black lieutenant governor of oh, Maryland. Yes. And he's a good guy. So hopefully you guys can chill. But I got to ask you about your mom. because I know you're Jamaican. And you got some Jamaican people in your family. Uh, but your mom's name is yeah, Joy, man. which is, I mean, clearly the best name. Uh, how is how's <laughs> Miss Joy? I mean, how excited is your family? I got to ask about your family and how they're taking your win. <laughs> I mean, my, my, my family is ecstatic, and I, and I always say the, the greatest gift that God gave me was the day that he asked Joy Moore to give birth to me. Um, you know, that was the greatest gift that I could have ever gotten from God. But, you know, I, I think about it where, you know, in this moment, uh, you know, I wanted to remind people that for all of our children, we are never in a room that we don't belong in. And last night I accepted, uh, you know, not just a nomination, but uh, was announced as a 63rd governor of a state where I was 11 years old and I had handcuffs on my wrists. You know, my mother didn't get her first job that gave her benefits until I was 14 years old. And if someone would have said to me when I was 11, sitting there with handcuffs on my wrist that, you know what, uh, you are one day going to be the governor of this state. I would have never believed it. And the reason I think our family is so exciting is this is this is the culmination of a lot of people pouring a lot into me and seeing something in me before I could see it in myself. And so uh, we're 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 excited, we're thrilled and we're humbled. And we just want to make sure that we can build a society that is not creating exceptions, but actually changing the rules. A Amen. And I hope at some point you live close enough that uh, Vice President Harris and you guys can sit down and talk about some cook up situation. You love to cook, you know, and you got to talk to the I'm talking about some of Jamaican stuff. You, know, <laughs> you guys ever have a chance because you got bring that the, bring the yardies too. together. Listen, bring the yardies. listen, listen. Well, you know, we the Guyanese people, the Guyanese can come to the cookout, too. So let's just make it a, a we'll make it a diaspora kind of party. Maryland governor-elect Wes Moore, thank you very much. We got much more. Appreciate and congratulations.